Eric with Bath Plus Kitchen and today we are going to go over a project that we completed recently in southeast Washington DC in a, in a townhouse that was built I believe in the 1920s. So on our website you can see the, uh, the before photos, after photos, and then we also have on this side here are renderings of the kitchen that we'll discuss today. So to start with, uh, the, the homeowners, Casey and Clay, they were new to remodeling. It was their first time. Uh, you know, so they were a little inexperienced, as you can expect. Uh, you know, just kind of new to the, to the game, not understanding all that is involved. So uh, they were great, great people to work with. Uh, you know, we loved having an opportunity to do this kitchen and do this space and uh, try to work within their budget as much as, much as possible while putting this all together. So uh, they had purchased a home recently and their intention, intentions are to stay in the home for probably another five to eight years. Uh, so just looking at the original photos, <clears throat> you can see a very kind of awkward layout. Uh, they have this small kitchen walled off by these two large posts and with the fridge on the other side here. Uh, and then you have uh, multiple levels of ceilings going on. Uh, so really what happened here was probably sometime within the past 30 years, a previous homeowner had, this is an addition where the kitchen is located. So they had that installed, uh, but they left the original exterior wall. So, you know, you can pretend there's like a window here and then there's probably with some type of sliding door here. So rather than take out this post to really open up the kitchen and open up the space, they left that there. Uh, and the reason for doing that is, is it's very costly to do that. So when, when I first met with Casey and Clay, uh, you know, obviously they, they you know, made, it made the most sense to take these posts out. Uh, and that's something we did look into ever. It was going to be very costly to do so. Uh, and, you know, given their goals and not wanting to put too much money into this house, uh, you know, we, we were kind of stuck with those and had to work around them. So luckily there was uh, some space here to work with on the, you know, this, this wall right here, uh, this large wall, which you don't see too often, that we were able to add cabinetry. So one of the things that we, we had to do to, to accomplish that, let me see if I can find a photo, was re we relocated a closet door, which is right on the other side of this wall to right here. So that allowed to max, us to maximize the space on this wall. Uh, you know, one of the other things that we did, this, you know, this house was, like I said, a lot of character to it, a lot of charm. If you're familiar with townhouses in, in uh, Southeast. And so what we did was we, we opened up some holes in this wall here and to see the condition of the original brick and it wasn't it was in good shape so we took out that whole wall exposed the brick and that added a lot of character a little bit of an industrial feel to the space um, so <clears throat> looking at the design here uh, we did a few different versions uh, but basically this is the layout we came up with uh, you know to really get provide as much cabinet space as possible much storage space as possible uh, while trying to still keep it a somewhat efficient layout. So we've got the sink with the dishwasher instead of a sink with the range how it was before, which is fairly odd. Uh, you know, and then this whole area is really kind of a cleaning area, a little bit of a prep area. Uh, over here, we've got our fridge with the drawer microwave. Uh, we did the drawer or microwave so because we have a hood, which is somewhat of a focal point. <laughs> um, let's see, looking in the after photos, we have the, the glass cabinets here. We did under cabinet lighting throughout. Very beautiful kitchen, very uh, timeless space. Uh, something to add a little bit of a twist. We did uh, the tile in a herringbone pattern above the range. And we have a, a fairly powerful hood to get all that, all the uh, cooking smells out of there. Um, you know, the, the hardware is this satin black 
kind of mix of a of a finish, a very cool finish, kind of pops there. Uh, we kept the original floors, or well, not original, they're, they're pre-finished floors. They're probably installed sometime in the past 30 years, uh, maybe less than that. Uh, painted, kind of a light gray here. We've got a crown molding. This pantry cabinet, when these two, do, two doors open, has four rollout trays. You know, so you really get a lot of efficiency out of something like that. These cabinets are frameless cabinets, so you're seeing nothing but the door and the drawer. So called a full overlay door. Uh, you know, frame is kitchen, a kitchen of this size, you get about 10 to 15% more storage space than if it were a framed inset kitchen. We've got the, uh, the bridge faucet, a lot of character and charm to that with a separate spray. Uh, here in this space, we are going back to add two wood stained open shelves uh, that we found through Etsy. And uh, that's definitely going to add a lot of character too. Uh, this is the door that was previously right here on this wall that we flipped over here. And something that's important in this space is trying to get the hinges to match up as close as possible in the door hardware to the rest of the hardware in the kitchen. It wouldn't look really good if this was polished chrome. Um, you know, going through, we have the GF, GFCI outlets, again, the under cabinet lighting, very beautiful uh, Supreme Carrera marble. And then these, these big farm sinks or apron sinks are, are uh, we love them. And we, we've been installing more and more of them. I, I would say that's a, that's a trend that's probably here to stay. They, they do cost a bit more. Uh, so if that's within the budget, you know, we, we do recommend them. And then here we have an induction range. If you don't know much about induction, while it, you can put your hand on top of this while it's at full power. It's, it uses a magnetic system, and you have to get all new co uh, cookware when you do that. So uh, it's quite an investment. This this range here probably costs another five hundred to thousand dollars more than a uh, you know similar gas or electric range of uh, pretty decent quality. Here we have a, a built-in fridge. So uh, not built-in. I would say a counter depth fridge. There's a difference between built-in and counter depth. Uh, so it doesn't stick out too far. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the, the clients are very happy with the space. They absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I don't know that they would really change a thing other than maybe, uh, you know, we, we did consider doing a different type of backsplash over the range. But, you know, budget being what it is, uh, we just we just kept it simple there with the subway tile. Uh, but yeah, lovely kitchen, lovely cabinets from Dura Supreme. Our team did a wonderful job with the design and getting this whole thing built out. If you have any questions or you'd like to uh, work with us, please visit us at bathpluskitchen.com. And that's all for today. Thanks.